Welcome to Lesson 1 in Unit 21, From Sun to Food. Prior to this life science unit, students may come with an understanding of what living things need to survive, such as food and water. They may have observed how plants grow from seed. They may also understand that living things have adaptations that help them get what they need to survive. In this lesson, students are introduced to a phenomenon of pizza with many different ingredients on it. Students figure out the common patterns of what living things need and do. They consider examples of matter and energy and how matter and energy move through a system. Finally, they develop an initial model of a pizza farm. This lesson sets the foundation for deeper explorations of how matter cycles and energy flow through ecosystems and how the energy in our food goes from the sun to our table. This lesson will take approximately two days. In order to have the best results for the bean experiment that happens in lesson three, you will have to set up the soaked beans in their bags on day one of this unit. Carefully read the directions on teacher page six ahead of time for instructions on how to set up the bean experiment. To do this, you will use the MySci materials provided for lesson three listed here. You will need to prepare the beans ahead of time by discarding any beans that are broken. For best results, Soak the beans for 2 to 12 hours before setting up the bean experiment with your students on day 1. You must provide water and staplers for this setup. Directions are detailed on teacher page 6. As an optional enrichment activity, you can provide students with a digital camera to set up a time lapse of the bean growth. See the Lesson 3 Extend activity for more details. To start the bean experiment setup, place students into 9 groups. Set up the bean experiment using the directions on teacher pages 6 and 7, as well as student page 8. Three variables will be tested, light, air, and water. Each of the three variables will be tested by three student groups to get the best data. Tell students to be careful with the soaked beans so that they do not damage them. Define and discuss variables and fair test with students. For differentiation, you could have students design their own investigations based on the engage question. You will walk students through the setup on teacher page 6 and 7. Be sure to discuss as a class why the groups are doing different tests. Facilitate a discussion by asking what questions are we trying to answer with each test. If students need guidance, you can prompt them by asking, do plants need air to grow? Water? Light? Refer students to the bean data collection sheet to make a prediction about where plants get the matter they need to grow. Discuss the types of data that will be collected. Discuss the importance of each type of data or observation and set up an observation schedule. We recommend observations every two days for a couple of weeks. Next, introduce the unit topics, how energy and matter move through ecosystems, and how living organisms get the things they need to grow. You should tell students, by the end of our unit, we are going to answer the question, how can we design a farm that minimally impacts the natural world and still feeds people? What do you think we need to know in order to be able to meet this design challenge? What questions do you have about this design challenge? Ask students to turn and talk to a partner, then share out some answers to the whole class. You may want to write some of their ideas and questions on a piece of chart paper to revisit throughout the unit. In the Engage portion of this lesson, introduce the anchoring phenomenon. You may want to ask students to imagine their favorite pizza, or you might even be able to introduce the unit by having a pizza party in class. Next, ask students to describe the ingredients of the pizza in this picture. Students might respond, pepperoni, mushrooms, peppers, onions, tomato sauce, wheat, and cheese. Ask students, what questions do you have about pizza ingredients? What must happen in order to create a delicious pizza? Make a chart of student questions so that you can track them throughout the unit. You may want to add to student questions or guide student questions towards the topics of energy and matter. 
It is important that you do not answer the questions at this time. Students will develop answers to these questions as they move through the unit. In the Explore portion of this lesson, students will classify living and non-living objects. Students should use the Living versus Non-Living sheet on student page 2 to create a chart about living and non-living things. Students should include once living but now dead things in the living category. Next, have student groups use the pond posters to identify living and non-living things on student page 2. They can also include items not explicitly shown on the poster, such as the sun, rocks, or the air. After they have a chance to identify some living and non-living things in their groups, have them identify how they knew something was living and what the living things are doing in order to survive. Encourage them to use evidence to support their ideas as you circulate. For example, I noticed the mosquito moving. This will help it survive by escaping the frog. I noticed the duck leading its babies and keeping them close, which will help its babies survive. After students have discussed in their groups, have them share out as a whole class. Discuss the patterns that students may notice all living things need or do. Record these patterns on chart paper. Students may respond that living things move, reproduce, breathe, eat to obtain energy, and grow. Non-living things might fit one or more of these categories. For example, rivers move and grow, but don't reproduce, breathe, or eat. Living things won't meet all of these criteria. As a differentiation option for students struggling with this topic, you can share this reading on characteristics of life with students. When it is time to observe the growth after the first day the beans were put in the baggies, have each group examine their seeds. There will likely be no growth yet, but students should still record their observations on their student page. We recommend students observe their beans every two days for a couple weeks. While the beans are growing, you will continue teaching my Psy lessons. As the beans grow, tell students in order to measure root length and stem length, students can use a piece of string to trace the length of the root and then straighten out the string to measure the total length. Be sure to keep an eye on the sprouts to make sure they don't dry out. Add a small amount of water to the bags if they seem dry. Review and check for understanding of controlled variable, dependent variable, fair test, independent variable by reviewing their data collection sheets. In the explain portion of this lesson, students will view a PBS Learning Media video, What Do Animals Eat?, then define matter and energy. Matter is considered materials or particles that make up both living and non-living things. Energy is what is stored in materials that allow living things to grow, move, and reproduce. Have students record these definitions on student page 2. Tell students that the following video might give them ideas on how animals get the energy and matter that they need to live. At this point, you may want to make it explicit to students that matter makes up everything on our planet, both abiotic, if it's non-living, and biotic, for living things. For example, air is made of matter, humans are made of matter, plants are made of matter. You may wish to stop the video at different segments and explain that the animal is eating, also known as consuming. Students can share their prior knowledge of food chains and webs at this point, but it will be further addressed in Section 3. Students should be able to say that the animals are eating food, which is matter, and the food matter holds energy that the animals need to grow, move, reproduce, and more. Here you can tie back to the unit anchoring phenomenon by asking them how matter and energy relate to why humans have farms. In the elaborate portion of this lesson, students revisit the pond poster in groups along with the chart they made for the poster on student page 2. 
have students work in groups to give examples of matter and energy within the ecosystem on the poster. For example, they could say that the sun is an example of energy. They could say that any other living or non-living thing on the poster is an example of matter. They could say that the frog jumping is an example of energy being used. They could say that the bird eating the fish is an example of obtaining energy. As you circulate among groups, listen for student reasoning and proper use of the definitions of matter and energy. In the evaluate portion of this lesson, students will develop a model that they will refine over the course of this unit by revisiting the unit phenomenon of a pizza with many ingredients on it. You may choose to use a larger chart or butcher paper and have students work in groups, or you may choose to use student page three and have them work individually. Alternatively, you could choose to have students keep refining the same piece of paper over time, or redraw each time with erasable pencil if they prefer to. Students should reflect on what they have learned about matter and energy, as well as what living things need and do. As they begin to develop their pizza farm model, tell students to consider each ingredient of their favorite pizza, for example, wheat, tomatoes, cheese, mushrooms, and sausage. It is okay to show students what a wheat plant looks like or what a tomato plant looks like. Tell students that as we move through this unit and learn more about matter and energy, we will change or refine our models to make them even better. You can use the rubric on student page four to guide the model creation. By the end of this lesson, students have been introduced to a phenomenon of pizza with many different ingredients on it. Students figured out the common patterns of what living things need and do, such as move, reproduce, breathe, get energy, and grow. They considered examples of matter and energy and how matter and energy move through a system. Finally, they developed an initial model of a pizza farm. This lesson set the foundation for deeper explorations of how matter cycles and energy flows through ecosystems and how the energy in our food goes from the sun to our table.